This video is brought to you by Savvy Tech. Hey everyone, today we're checking out the LHDC1 USB-C dongle, which makes it easier than ever to access the highest quality streaming you can get over Bluetooth. Even on your MacBook or iPhone 15, you can finally take advantage of Apple Music's 24-bit, 192 kilohertz lossless streaming without any wires. Now this is currently on Kickstarter, so I'll leave a link down in the description for more information. Now the LHDC codec is still relatively new, but has been adopted by some pretty big brands, Edifier, Oppo, OnePlus, Nothing, and Xiaomi. And where LHDC really separates themselves from the other codecs is by giving you the high quality streaming, but with better connectivity and lower latency. But now you might be thinking, how does this dongle actually work? And how much better does LHDC sound compared to other codecs? Well, first let's start with the dongle. It's a simple USB-C dongle that you plug into your phone or computer, and it doesn't require a battery. It will just use a device's power. It's super simple with just one button on there and two LEDs that'll let you know what's going on with the dongle. It also has a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and pairing is simple. On the first use, it'll automatically go into pairing mode. Otherwise, you just need to double tap the button. Then you just need to turn your earbuds into pairing mode and they'll automatically connect to the dongle. And like any Bluetooth device, it will save to the dongle and automatically connect every time you take the earbuds out of their case. And you can have multiple earbuds connected. And if it doesn't connect for whatever reason, you can just tap the button once and that'll cycle through the pairing list. Now onto the two LED indicators. The light closest to the button is the Bluetooth indicator. It'll flash blue and red when pairing. Solid blue is when the earbuds are connected and solid red will mean there's no connection. It'll light up green when the low latency mode is activated. And the other LED is gonna let you know the sampling rate. So SBC will be white, LHDC 48 kilohertz is red, LHDC 96 kilohertz is blue and LHDC 192 kilohertz will be green. And LHDC is the first codec to offer what they call master tape audio, which is 24 bit, 192 kilohertz. So this is what they would consider high res audio, where a codec like Aptex Lossless, that'll stream at 16 bit, 44.1 kilohertz, which is considered CD quality, but some wouldn't consider that high res. Now LDAC will go as high as 32 bit, 96 kilohertz. And that kilohertz number is basically how many samples are streamed per second, where the bit depth represents a dynamic range. Generally, the higher the bit depth, the greater the detail you get with your sound. And these measurements are usually synonymous with lossless files. So sometimes bit depth can get confused with bit rate because that's measured in kilobits per second. So AAC, which is what iPhones use, stream at 256 kilobits per second. LDAC goes up to 990, LHDC 1000, and Aptex lossless 1200. So going off that, Aptex lossless has the highest transfer of data, but it does it at 16 bit 44.1 kilohertz, where LHDC can go as high as 24 bit 192 kilohertz. Now I don't have any Aptex lossless devices to test the difference, so I personally don't know which is better, and it's pretty hard to find any information of this online. Now codecs aren't my expertise, so I will link all the articles and videos down in the description if you wanna look into it a little bit more. So with all these numbers in mind, to actually take advantage of this codec that you are using, you need a high quality streaming service. And it gets even more confusing here because not all streaming services work the same on certain devices. So Apple Music can stream 24 bit, 192 kilohertz on an iPhone with no issues. On a MacBook though, you need to use an attachment. And if you use Apple Music on Windows or Android, it's not gonna stream at 24 bit, 192 kilohertz, which makes sense, it's, it's Apple. Cobuzz seems like the best option if you're on Windows or Android, but I'll link a video up here from the headphone show and they go into detail with all the different streaming services and what operating system they work the best with. But now let's get into how music actually sounds with LHDC One. So in my testing, I have three LHDC capable earbuds, the OnePlus Buds Pro 2, the Nothing Ear 2, and the Edifier Neo Buds Pro 2. The OnePlus Buds Pro 2 only go as high as 48 kilohertz, where the Nothing Ear 2 and Neo Buds Pro 2 are capable of 24 bit, 192 kilohertz. Now my testing devices included a MacBook Pro M1 and an iPhone 15 Pro, and it worked on my Samsung Galaxy S10e as well. Now the high res streaming service I used was Apple Music, but I also tested it on Spotify to kind of see the differences between the two streaming services. And I was testing all the earbuds, comparing devices, going from using Bluetooth on my iPhone to the LHDC dongle on Apple Music, and then using Spotify with the dongle. I spent hours going back and forth, 
driving myself a little bit crazy. But to sum it up, overall, the best sounding one, as you would expect, was the LHDC1 dongle with Apple Music 24-bit 192 kilohertz. So keeping in mind, Spotify doesn't have any high-res streaming options. The highest bit rate they go is 320 kilobits per second. But comparing just using Bluetooth on my iPhone 15 Pro, compared to the LHDC1 dongle, I'm still noticing about a 2% improvement overall in sound quality. And with the LHDC1 dongle, now to Apple Music, that's roughly another 2% improvement in sound. And when I was testing it on my Galaxy S10e using LDAC and then comparing it to LHDC, it was about a 1%, maybe 2% improvement overall. So going from LDAC to LHDC, LHDC is slightly better. So let's go into my listening experience here so I can kind of explain what these percentage increases actually mean. So on Apple Music, there's only a small amount of albums that actually stream at 24-bit 192. Luckily, Vulgar Display of Power by Pantera is one of them. So Mouth for War was one of my go-to testing songs, which is great because it's a banger. So with this song, I was using the Nothing E2 connected to my iPhone 15 Pro via Bluetooth. So that was with AAC. And then I compared it to how it sounded with my MacBook Pro M1. And that was streaming at 24 bit, 192 kilohertz on the LHDC1 dongle. And I used the lossless switcher add-on to ensure my Mac was streaming at 192 kilohertz, which it was. So the main differences I noticed between the two devices was more low end from the guitar and kick drums. They all just had a richer and fuller sound. Vocals were more separated from the other instruments. And the kick drums also had more punch while at the same time having a little bit more low end to them. And the lead guitar, especially during the solo, was more detailed and separated. Overall, the main difference there was better separation and a slightly rich and full sound. The next song I tested was Don't Panic by Coldplay. The biggest difference here was with the bass. The deeper bass notes were more present, but not as if it was boosted. It just stood out more and similar to the low end in Mouth For War was a bit richer. And similar to Mouth For War, I just noticed better instrument separation overall. The most noticeable difference with this song was the bass though. Now these differences I'm mentioning here, I really had to like listen with intent and really try and pick out the differences. If I was just casually listening, not really focusing on the music, I probably wouldn't notice much of a difference. So if you're just an average listener, you might not notice a difference. And if you also have hearing loss, you might not be able to hear these differences as well. I've done some hearing tests and I, I'm on the verge of having hearing loss. I've been to a lot of raves without hearing protection and I played drums from when I was like 16 to 22 also without hearing protection. So my hearing is better than it should be, I guess. But I'm still able to hear these subtle differences. And again, all these differences is going from AAC to LHDC. When I was going from LDAC to LHDC, it was a smaller improvement. An advantage of LHDC though is better connectivity, especially in a busy environment. So I tested my LHDC1 dongle in a pretty busy shopping center and I didn't notice one dropout. But still, these high-res codecs aren't made to be used in a busy environment, but I'm just noticing better connectivity with LHDC. Another advantage of LHDC is that you can still use multi-point connection. So I had my earbuds connected to the dongle as well as my computer at the same time, and it worked flawlessly where a lot of earbuds that use LDAC can't use multi-point connection. And another feature I couldn't test is LHDCX, which is spatial audio software you can download on Windows, which will reproduce 7.1 surround sound. And I was told this is also gonna be coming to iOS. Now, another advantage of LHDC is gonna be the lower latency. Now, when you're using 24-bit 192 kilohertz, the latency isn't that great. Even when watching videos, I'm noticing a slight amount, but you can just press the button once on the dongle and that will activate the low latency mode. Now, this worked on the Nothing Ear 2 and OnePlus Buds Pro 2, but it didn't work on the Neobuds Pro 2 for some reason, when I know they do have a low latency mode. So what you could do with those earbuds is just add it to the touch controls and you can activate it like that. So in my quick test playing a mobile shooter, the latency was brought down quite a bit and it was much more playable. But now let's talk about some of the drawbacks of using a dongle over just connecting the earbuds to your phone. So since the earbuds are connected to the dongle, not your phone, if you wanna go into the earbuds app, you'll have to connect the earbuds to your device and then open up the app like that, adjust the settings and reconnect to your dongle. But if your earbuds have multi-point connection, then you can just have them connected at the same time and that's an easy workaround. Also with the Nothing Ear 2 and Neobuds Pro 2, I did have to jump into the Android app to activate the high-res audio mode and then reconnect them to the dongle and then that would work. So if you only have an iOS device, you can't activate the high-res audio mode in those apps. But once you do that once, you don't have to do it again. So if you can just find an Android device and it's done. So it would be good if these iOS apps could have the option because the Sennheiser Momentum 3 allow you to activate their high-res audio mode in the iOS app. Another issue is that you aren't able to control like your playback, your volume on the earbuds. You'll have to do all of that on the device. And you also can't take calls with a microphone on the earbuds. It's just gonna use a microphone on your device. 
But let's be honest, if you're gonna be using a dongle like this, it's most likely just gonna to be to stream the highest quality music and it brings it to devices that just aren't capable of doing so. That's what it's designed to do and it works really well. Now, if you're interested in some earbuds that do use LHDC, check out my video here where I ranked 10 of the best earbuds and the two of those earbuds were the Nothing Ear 2 and OnePlus Buds Pro 2. And they fared pretty well in the ranking. So check that out. In the meantime, stay picky. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.